All right, so we're going to go over the five type of clients that you're going to run into in Medicare. We're going to go through each one of them. And by the time you hear this, you're going to know how to sell Medicare. Awesome. That's the whole point, right? So now yes. you've got Medicare one-on-one, -on -one, who your target market is. Now we're going to do the sale, right? Obviously sit down and how to service the clients. You guys are lucky here today because this meeting is the only one you're going to get call and myself live. We're not going to go to the other boot camps. I'm going to Tampa, but he cannot make it. So our national trainer, you get the CEO here. I'm going to be the client and he's going to be the producer. Okay. You guys ready to get started? You ready to get started? Good. Let's do it. Okay. Before we actually start, I've got a question. What's the difference between a Medicare supplement and Medicare Advantage? Prepaid plan, okay. And Medicare Advantage is what? Pay I love that answer. Awesome. Good job. Excellent Good job. Now, before we get started, let me tell you that Medicare is a different kind of sale. Some of you have done life and you understand you have to build rapport. Medicare is dealing with people who are 65 and older with 95% of your clients which means they have lived a long life, they've got a long story, and they want to talk a little bit. So sometimes you're gonna to have to listen and let it go, right? Listen and absorb, and use that information that they're giving you to understand their story. And once you understand their story, then what we're teaching right here and what we're gonna do is gonna go fabulous for you, okay? So, you ready to start? Ready. All right. How you doing? My name's Carl. Hi, how are you, Carl? Thanks for coming by my office, or my house. Absolutely. And, and what should I refer you to? Is Gabriel, Mr. Burgos? Either one. My okay. friends call me Gabe. Gabe. Well, I like to be friends, so I'll call you Gabe if that's all right. Awesome. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So, let me, let me find out, what, what's your situation? I mean, what, what's, why am I here today? Well, um, yeah, I'm... I mean, I'm getting ready to retire. I'm like three months out okay. from turning, uh, re retiring and turning 65. I'm pretty healthy, man. I, I don't really have any issues whatsoever. Like, Excellent. I feel great. I'm actually in my work insurance, but you know, when I retire, they don't get benefits anymore, right? You used to get companies that paid for your stuff or you would have a work pension and that's all going away, man. So okay. yeah, I'm glad to meet with you. I don't know what we're going to do about our health insurance, man. And I've heard about this Medicare thing, but I don't know. Gotcha. So has anybody ever sat down and talked with you about Medicare at all? No, man. I got my card in the mail. Okay. And I, I try to go on the U.S. government website or something, org. I That's like Chinese. So I can't understand anything sure. that says on there. Okay. You're probably, if you haven't gotten already, you're probably going to get a book called Medicare and You. Yeah, I think that's what I, I think I got that in okay. the mail. And Carl, I, I, I'm really glad you're here. I don't understand any of it. <laughs> Let me, let me, let me just go ahead and put some of your fears at ease right now. Yeah. I'm going to go through that whole book. It's about 130 plus pages. We're wow. going to talk yeah. about that in five minutes. In and you'll five be able minutes. to understand it. Think I, I'm so happy you're here, man. You want awesome. some coffee? No, I got some tea. So I'm all good. right. Perfect. Okay. All right. So you said you received your, your Medicare card. Yep. Can I see that? Sure. I want to see the Medicare card. I want to make sure that they already have the Medicare card in hand, right? So boom, we got the Medicare card out. I'm looking at it. I want to make sure that both part A and part B are on that card. If part B is not on that card yet, we need to have a conversation about that. So Gabriel, I see that you don't have part B yet. Um, did you get that little card that gave you the election to go ahead and sign up for that? I don't know, man. I'm I'm not quite sure. Okay, so you're think about so. you're about three months out, which is right about the window where you need to sign up for it. So anything that I can do for you, which is a lot of great things, we have to put Part B in place. Yeah. So I read you, on the website you can get penalized or something if I don't sign up for absolutely. Part B or something, but I don't know the details. <laughs> it's ten percent. Ten percent. Oh. 
Ten percent um, of what? Well, ten percent of the monthly of the monthly charge that you would be billed every month. Oh. But you know what's crazy about that penalty is it never goes away. What? Yeah. So Once if I live till ninety, a hundred? Hundred, hundred and twenty. Every month that can, penalty. Can you help me up. sign up for that or um I can point you in the right direction. I can't do it for you, but I'll give you the website when we get done. Awesome. Okay. okay. So Does it cost anything? Do, um, yeah, so let's go over Medicare real quick. Sure. What your what your card actually does. So let me point this out to you. So here you've got part A, right? So if you're looking on the screen here, I'm in this orange box, right? And I'm pointing to it on his card. This is your part A. Now, what's cool about this is you've already worked 10 years um, and you've paid FICA taxes, correct? Yes. Okay. A lot so of it. Unless you have an accelerated income, you've probably already paid for your part A, which means you're not going to have any cost for that. Awesome. Now, for people who have incomes that have been greater than 100000 then you need to pull up the slides like we talked about earlier and show them the breakdown. But most of the people that you talk to are going to fall in the category where there's no premium for Part A. Awesome. That's so good news. So you've already paid for your Part A, which is great. Now, Part A is pretty easy to understand. I'm going to break this down into what I call Snoopy, Snoopy terms, okay? Sure. Part A covers anything that's overnight. If you go into the hospital and you stay overnight, it's covered under Part A. Awesome. If you go into a nursing home, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, a skilled nursing, that's overnight. If you go into hospice, that's all covered under Part A. So overnight services are Part A. Okay. Easy to understand, right? Yep. So that means Part B is same day. If you go to the doctor, if you go to the pharmacy, not the pharmacy, excuse me, if you go to the doctor, if you get an MRI done, an x-ray, you go to see a specialist, any of those things, you do the same day, right? Sure. Those are your Part B services. Okay. You know what's missing out of what I just told you is drug coverage. Mm. So original Medicare does not give you drug coverage. Okay. So let me break down some costs and I'll tell you how we're going to fix the problem because you're going to see in just a second there's some problem with some of these costs here's what part a looks like and what i'm doing i can either have this printed out i really love these booklets by the way that are perforated you could draw it out and give it to the client when you're done and they can remember the conversation that you're having with them right so i'm drawing out Part A, Part B. Now I'm going to the bottom of the page and I'm talking about Part A. When you go to the hospital game, what's going to happen is you're going to get hit with a deductible. The first, the first night that you stay over, they're going to hit you for that $1,600. That's wow. a big bill for one night, right? Sure is. But on the flip side of that, that $1,600 does cover you for the first 60 days. Mm. OK, now we're just talking about original Medicare. We've got some other options we're going to talk about, but your basic coverage right now, you've got 60 days that's covered under that sixteen hundred dollar deductible, which is kind of high. The problem starts coming after that. When you have 60, 70, 80 days, you go into tiers. So what it looks like is you've got days 61 through 90 each day that you're in the hospital cost four hundred dollars out of your pocket wow so think about 30 days of four hundred dollars yeah each that's a lot of money but then it gets worse because after 90 days it jumps up to eight hundred dollars each day wow and if you break the 150 day mark day 151 everything is coming out of your pocket 100%. Medicare doesn't cover anything anything else for the rest of the year. Wow. So there's a lot of gap when it comes to the hospital coverage, wow. right? And I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to tell you what Medicare coverage looks like. Oh, I appreciate We're it. We're going to fix this. I promise you. Thank God. I was just going to ask you if you had a solution <laughs> for this. Absolutely. Now, Part B. Now, keep in mind, Part A, that's your overnight services. Yep. Not going to use that all the time, but that's your overnight services. Part B is your same day services. Now, these are the things that you're mostly going to use. Your doctor visits, right? 
if you need a CT scan or X-ray or MRI or any of these things, you have a deductible. That deductible is $226. After that, you have 20% cost of whatever the bill is. So if you go to a doctor and the doctor says, hey, my bill is $100, you pay the first $226 and then it's a $20 bill. Okay. Which is not too bad. Yeah. But if you go to have a CT scan, which is thousands of dollars, 20% of thousands of dollars is not very nice. Yeah. Right? Not at all. So how we fix that? <laughs> We've got two different pathways that we can go to fix this. Okay. And as I'm drawing this out, I don't put it on this sheet here, but I point arrows, right? My first arrow is going down. I'm going to talk about Medicare supplements. The goal of a Medicare supplement is to eliminate almost all of those costs. Okay. okay. So if you feel like you've got some pretty, pretty heavy risk involved, if uh, you're prone to go to the hospital, if you have a, a lot of things going on, what you can do is prepay your medical costs that we just talked about down below at this sheet with a monthly premium. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like Medicare supplement to me. I, Medicare I read supplement. a little pamphlet about yeah. that one. Because there's it, one that you pay and then there's one that you don't pay. Exactly. And I don't really know the difference. Right. So this is the Medicare supplement. Okay. A lot of times they call them Medi Medigap policies because Medigap. they build okay. the gap that's there with Medicare. Yeah. Okay. So on average, and I'm just speaking in general terms, we'll have to look at your specific needs, but in general... If you're going to take away all those costs, the only one that you can't take away is that 226. Okay. That Part B pre, uh, uh, deductible, you're going to pay that no matter what. But there are supplements that will take care of everything else. Wow. Okay. If you want to do something like that, it's going to cost you about $200 a month. Okay. It's not too bad. Now, that varies depending on where we live, right? But yeah. Let's say in this area, it's about $200 a month. It's better than paying 100% out of pocket, I guess. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Because what that does is it kind of puts a cap on, on your overall cost. Yeah. For example, if you went to the hospital for six months, that's a lot of money. And you could cap that out at about $2,500. Yeah. That's not too bad. Right? Sounds almost like traditional insurance. <laughs> right. Right. Now, if we go that path, we mm -hmm. also have to figure out drug coverage. Mm. So we'll have to get a Part D plan. So yeah, I read it in the pamphlet. So I'm going right. to, what, what's book? that Part D thing? So Part D is your drug coverage. Okay. Right? Your drug coverage can be so, either standalone. So that's not covered with the supplement plan that you're talking about? No, none of the supplements cover drugs. So oh, so it's on top of that. Path. Okay. We've got to get a supplement and we've got to get a drug plan. Got it. And it doesn't even have to be with the same company. So what we can do is we can shop around and see who's got the cheapest rates yeah. to do what you're going to do. Now, what I will say is this. With Medicare supplements, there's a bunch of different letters, right? I call it the alphabet soup of Medicare. Yeah. A and K and C and N and F and G. Yep. There's all these different letters, right? Yeah, I saw that in the book. That's when I threw it across the room. <laughs> you know what's funny? is every single company that offers these Medicare supplements pays the exact same thing, but they all charge you a different monthly rate. So oh. if we're looking at Medicare supplements, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the cheapest plan for what you want. I don't care what company it is. So, and you, and you Carl, can it. I ask you a question? Sure. I see that you work for LBA. Are you guys like working for Humana or something, or are you guys have access to all the companies. No, I'm what they consider a broker. So oh, no wow. matter what we talk about today, and we're going to talk about a couple of different options, major options, and we'll kind of dive down from there. But I can do anything outside of just your original Medicare to help fix your original Medicare. Wow. So you're not captive, right? No, I'm not captive. I work as an independent agent. That's fantastic. So, so you have, have all the carriers, huh? I have all the carriers that anything that you would want, I have access to. Thank God. That's good. <laughs> good to know.
um, with an asterisk. In California, we do not have uh, uh, Kaiser Permanente. Kaiser. In that's, California, we do not have Kaiser. That's, Outside of that, we have everything else. There's a reason for that, too. They kind of have a little monopoly in California there or whatever. But Okay. So is this better if I put it on my chin here? Yeah, yeah good? much okay. better. All right. So now if we look at a drug plan, mm -hmm. an average cost is going to be about $50. Oh, I've seen bad. them as low as, I think, $8. I've wow. seen them as high as $150. So if we're just kind of mid-ranging them, we're going to say 50. And if you take that 250 and you multiply that for 12 months, guess, guess what? That turns into $3,000 for the year. So wow. one way to fix your Medicare, all those crazy costs that we just talked about, is we can spend $3,000 up front and say, you know what? The only cost I'm going to have is the 226 for my Part B deductible. Sure. And then whatever co-pays or a deductible that my drug plan has. Sure. Okay? Okay. So it'll keep your cost pretty solid right at that $3,000 mark. And then a little bit more um, just because of the Part B deductible and the, and the cost of your drugs. Yeah. Now, a lot of people look at me and they say, you know what, Carl? $3,000 is a lot of money. Uh, I, I don't think I can afford that. Sure. And, and truth be told, if you're healthy, why would you spend $3,000 if you don't have to? Mm -hmm. Right? A lot of times what I'll do, and I didn't bring it with me this time, but I'll take Monopoly money and I'll give you $3,000. I'll right. say this is what it would cost for a supplement. And now we'll play a different game. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at a different pathway. Right? Now we're going to look at Medicare Advantage. Okay. What Medicare advantages, So that was the first option, basically? That was the first pathway. Pathway. Right? Got it. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. So the first pathway is we're going to prepay for everything. Okay. Medicare supplement, get a standalone drug plan, and then the only cost that I'm going to have is a little bit here for your, um, your drugs when you pick them up at the pharmacy, mm -hmm. and then I've got that Part B deductible that I have to pay. Okay. Outside Would I pay that, that $3,000 okay. up front, or...? You're is it monthly? Pay it monthly? So you probably have a bill okay. for about two hundred dollars a month for the supplement. Two to two fifty, about that. Okay. And then about fifty dollars, give or take, for the for the drug plan. Oh, I can. I, I think I can afford that. That's that's okay. not too bad. So yeah. that's an option. Yeah, it's not too bad. The other option now is Medicare Advantage. Now, what Medicare Advantage does mm. is kind of unique. CMS, which is over all of Medicare allows private insurance companies to take your Medicare and rearrange it okay. so it's more affordable. And so instead of prepaying for your insurance, you're actually only paying for the services you have done. <coughs> so you said at the beginning of this, you're a very healthy person. Yep. Right? Well, I might be able to save you some money with Medicare Advantage because if you don't go to the doctor, you don't have to pay for that visit. Yeah. Well, on a Medicare supplement, you have already paid for that visit. Does that make sense? That's that makes. I love saving money, Carl. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about how Medicare Advantage works. What Medicare Advantage does is it takes your Part A, which is your overnight. Right. It takes your Part B, which is your same day services. Sure. And it adds drug coverage into one plan. Okay. Okay. Now, a lot of these don't have a monthly premium, so you're not paying anything per month for these plans. And in some areas, you actually can get a rebate on the Part B premium, which means that that one sixty four ninety that you're paying can be lessened and back into your pocket. Wow. So we'll see if we have that in that area. I'm not sure, but we can take a look at that. Okay, that sounds okay. really good. Now, Medicare Advantage is very similar to what you probably have experienced if you've had group insurance. And I think you just said yeah. you're going to just come off your group insurance, right? Yeah, we had Cigno in my, my company. Did you have an HMO or a PPO? We had a PPO. Okay. Yeah. So you're familiar with the term, right? I am. PPO says, hey, I could go pretty much to whatever doctor, and I've got different costs for different doctors, right? Right. So here's how... Medicare Advantage works. It has PPO options, 
and it has HMO options. Okay. Here's the difference if you're not sure how they work. Now, let me do a sidebar here for a second. Even if somebody knows how they work, I'm still going to explain it to them yeah. because I want to be exactly on the same page with this person. Okay. So real, real quick, you know, PPO is kind of an open network. You can go everywhere. HMO, they have their own private network that you have to stay within that. It works the same on the, you know, regular insurance type. Okay. Stealing my thunder. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm so, back to being a customer. <laughs> <laughs> so Gabe, here's how an HMO works. You see the little box that I'm drawing here for you? And again, I'd be drawing this on a piece of paper. You have doctors, you have hospitals, you have specialists, you have pharmacies that are inside of a network. That means they have made a contract with this company okay. that you can go see them for that specific cost or, or whatever. But you, in an HMO, you have to maintain inside of that box okay. that network of doctors or that network of hospitals, or that network of pharmacies. Got it. You can't go outside. If you do, guess what's going to happen? You're going to pay the full cost for that service. And sure. You don't want to do that. No, we don't. Okay. Now, on the other side, you have a PPO. Now, it's built similar because it does have a network, right? You've got participating doctors that work with the plan. Okay. But a PPO allows you to go outside and you're going to pay a little bit more for that visit. Let me give you an example. If you went to see a specialist on an HMO, your average cost is probably about $20 to $30. So let's just say it's $25. If you went to see that exact same specialist on a PPO, it's going to be a little bit higher if it's out of network than if it's in network. So it might be $40 in network, and fifty dollars out of network. Gotcha. Depending on how they're contracted with that insurance company. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. So you have an HMO where you stay in network, and then you have a PPO where you have an option to see doctors outside of network if you need to, but you can always stay in network if you want to. Sure. Makes sense, right? Yeah, it works like that with the plan that I'm coming off of now. Yeah. Perfect. So down here I've got a bunch of companies, right? There's a whole bunch of companies that offer all these plans, Medicare supplements, Medicare Advantage. Mm -hmm. My job is to figure out what pathway is going to be the right one for you. So let's dive into that just a little bit. Let me ask you, do you have a primary care physician? Uh, yeah, I do, actually. Okay. What's his name or her name? Dr. Kevorkian. Dr. Kevorkian. <laughs> yep. Okay. He's very good. Uh, you know, I've heard I've heard uh, some things about your doctor. Yeah, he's excellent. <laughs> I, I heard he'll stay with you to the end. Till the end. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's him. Okay. All right. So, on, I'll tell you how we'll do this. The easiest way for me to figure out your average is let's just look at your last year. Sure. What did last year look like? How many times did you go see your primary doctor? Man, I went like twice. I think maybe three times. It was just colds, things okay. like that. Not Sounds too many good. times. Okay. So what I'm going to do with you is I'm going to ask you questions. And if your answers are less than what the national average is, I'm just going to use the national average. Sure. Okay. And if it's greater than the national average, I'm going to use your numbers. Okay. Okay. So... The national average for people seeing their primary doctor is five visits. Okay. Once a quarter. And then you're going to get sick. You're going to catch the flu. Sure. Right? So most people have five visits per year. Okay. Now, if we go back and we think about the number I just told you for the for the visits, right? Um, I'm sorry. We're still on, on primary doctor. And HMO... Well, let me explain it HMO a little bit better. HMO, because it's a network-based product, it's a preventative product. Okay. It's built for healthy people. So people who want to go on an HMO know that they're going to have a set number of doctors that they go to. And the cool thing about most HMOs, 
is they want you to see your primary care physician. They want you to see him so badly that most of them don't even charge you to go see that doctor. It's free? Normally, it's zero copay. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Most, most, not all, but most. Okay. Now, a PPO is going to have a charge to it. Okay. But it's going to be small. It might be $10. It might be $20. Sure. Okay. But the difference between the two is in an HMO, your primary care physician is kind of looking over your whole health and he's talking to your specialist. He's talking to the people who's doing your imaging. Sure. Right? Yeah. So he's kind of in charge of your health care. On a PPO, you're in charge of your health care. Got it. You're the one that's going to have to coordinate with your specialist, getting the x-rays, the MRIs, and things like that. So they're going to give you a referral, and you're going to go make that referral happen. Where on an HMO, they're going to put you with somebody in the, in the network. They're going to make that referral happen for you. Excellent. Okay. Thank you for that. Sure. So if we did cost, which I apologize, I don't have anything to write on this, but what I would write down on this paper is five visits for both the HMO, the PPO, and the supplement. Zero cost for the HMO. A hundred dollars for the PPO. That's five times 20, right? Because I want to overshoot. Let's use the high numbers. Okay. And on a Medicare supplement, I'm just going to put a dash because I've already prepaid it. Right? That cost has already been prepaid. <coughs> now let's talk about your specialist. How many specialists do you have? Um, I don't have any right now, actually. Okay, so you don't... I you told don't... you, Carl, I was pretty healthy. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Most most seniors have two specialists. Well, Carl, I'm not a senior, man. I'm turning 65. <laughs> so don't go there. Ah, oh, man. I'll be there shortly. Maybe like 25, 40, 45 years, 55 years. No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so no specialist. The average nope. is two. Most people have two. Awesome. Um, like a cardiologist and a podiatrist or, or something like that. Yeah. So you don't see any doctors outside of your primary. No, just the primary and the gynecologist. Okay, so gynecologist would be specialist. We don't have to get into it, Carl. <laughs> We'll skip that one. Okay. So we'll we got to have fun. This stuff is kind of dry. We'll just say you have two because that's okay. the average. Okay. Right? So you remember when I was going through my chart, I said my example is $25 for an HMO, right? Yeah. So two, uh, two visits, and we would want you to see them quarterly, right? Just like your primary. Sure. And we're going to do easy math, so we're only going to do four visits, right? Two times four is eight. Eight times 25 is $200. Okay. For the year. All right. That's all your doctor's cost. That's it? For the HMO. All right. So far. Right? We're going to keep going. We're going to look at your whole year. Okay. But if we look at the PPO, we did those same five visits. The cost is going to be a little bit more. Let's say it's $50 copay. Right? $400 for the year to see all eight of those visits. Wow. Okay. So now we're getting a little bit up there on the PPO. And again, on the Medicare supplement, we've already prepaid for that. Okay. Makes sense? Does. Perfect. Now, let me ask you this. I know you said you're healthy. I don't see any cast or I don't see anything else. Have you been in the hospital at all last year? No. Do you have any risk of seeing yourself going into the hospital next year? Uh, I don't think so, man. I'm Carl. I don't know how many times you want me to tell you. I'm pretty healthy, man. I'm telling you the <laughs> truth. Okay. But here's what I'm going to do for the sake of argument, mm -hmm. just to show you cost comparison. Sure. I'm going to put you in the hospital for one day. Sure. Carl, if that makes you feel better. It does. It makes me feel better to let you see how they kind of sort themselves out. Sounds like you're trying to do the right thing by me, Carl. Always. Thank you. Appreciate that. So... If we put you in the hospital for one day on an HMO, let's say it's about two hundred dollars for okay. that day. Okay, a PPO is going to be slightly more, probably about three hundred dollars. Okay, 
and then a Medicare supplement, guess what? What? It's already paid. Wow. It's prepaid it. Awesome. Right? So let me take a pause real quick in this interaction. It sounds like I'm pushing the supplement, doesn't it? It's already prepaid. It's already prepaid. Watch what happens now. Do you have any surgeries coming up? Uh, no, I don't, Carl. Okay, so we have no cost there across the board. Even the Medicare supplement's already prepaid anyway. But let's tally these up for the year. Last year, on an HMO, you would have spent zero on your primary care. You would have spent $200 on your specialist visit. Okay. And even if you went in the hospital for a day, you went in and you would have had a $200 to copay. Yep. That's $400 for the year. Okay. That's all you would have spent, plus whatever drugs you would have picked up at the pharmacy. Sure. Okay. Now, in a PPO, well, a little bit higher. We've got $100, which is that five $20 visits. Okay. I'm $400 for my specialist because, remember, they're $50 right. at eight visits. And then I've got $300 for my hospital stay. Okay. That's still only $800 for the year. Okay. Now, a Medicare supplement is $3,000 no matter what. Wow. No so, matter what, huh? No matter what, because you're prepaying it. Okay. Okay. So I know sometimes Medicare supplements sound really good. Hey, I paid for it. It's all good. I don't have to worry about it. I've got this little bit of cost I got to go, but otherwise I just show my card and I'm good to go. But I just want you to kind of see the difference in cost because you're very healthy, Gabriel. And so I don't know about you, but if I had a chance to spend less than a thousand dollars, 400, right? For the whole year. And you didn't even go to the hospital, so technically we're we're at two hundred. We're shooting. Yeah, we're right? at two hundred. Yeah. Well, you didn't even have specialists, so you don't, except the gynecologist. That's right. So, <laughs> so we're really overshooting. I'm showing you what the average person would spend. You're well below <laughs> that, right? So technically, if you were true to what you said, you only see your primary care, and you only see them two or three times a year, and that's it you actually wouldn't have had any cost except for when you went to the pharmacy. Wow. That's amazing. So that's a big difference between that and a Medicare supplement. Right? Yeah. Why? So that's something to think about. And I don't want to push you one way or another, but I want you to think about what makes more sense because well, now Carl, we've got... The only thing, I mean, obviously with the numbers, right? Because the math doesn't lie here. You know, the Medicare Advantage plans, I mean... My worst scenario, uh, case scenario was 400 bucks. Actually, by the looks of it, it was 200, probably less. So why would, why wouldn't anybody do that versus a supplement plan? Well, now, now that's where we start talking about what's most important, right? Sure. But before we do that, let's look at this long term because there's a couple other things I want you to, to be privy to, right? Okay. So let's look at what maybe a five year or a ten year would look like, right? Sure. And this page, again, you can download off of our website. It's together. We're going to look at an HMO, a PPO, and a supplement one year, five years, and 10 years and see what it looks like. But I'm going to throw a couple curveballs in there. Okay. Okay. And I apologize that I can't write on the screen, so you're going to have to write it down in your little booklets that you have. Okay. HMO year one, right? We already have the figures. We just figured it out. $400 for year one, $800 for the PPO, and we're $3,000 no matter what when it comes to the Medicare supplement. Now, for easy math, Gabe, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say in five years, your Medicare supplement is $15,000. Yeah. In year 10, you've spent $30,000. Okay. Makes sense, right? That's easy math. Sure. Let's break down how an HMO would work, even if you have some problems, right? Because our health is not guaranteed. No, it's not. And if you have a major occurrence, <coughs> I want you to see what it would look like long term. 
right? Now, let's say year one, you have the $400. Year two, you're at $400. Year three, you have a catastrophic year. And I don't wish this on you, and I hope it never happens to anybody I ever talk to. But I have seen it a couple times. Sure. I've, I've seen people have a stroke or a heart attack. Sure. My mother personally got hit by a car. Oh. She was in the hospital for 60 days. Wow. In a coma. Sorry to hear that, Carl. That's wow. that's a true story, by the way. On Medicare. In a year like that, you're going to have some accelerated cost. On an HMO or a PPO or any Medicare Advantage plan, you're going to have something called a MOOP. Right? Sounds kind of funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> maximum out of pocket that means once you reach this limit the plan's going to take over just like the supplement pays for everything sure once you hit that limit the plan is going to take care of everything okay so how much is the poop well it depends on the plan but i'm going to go on the really high side okay right and Did i'm going to say poop or move Moop. Moop. Okay. Got it. I feel like I'm spitting at you because I can see did. my breath over here. <laughs> um, maximum out of pocket. So let's say Got I it. hit that. Let's say that you pick a plan and the maximum out of pocket for that plan is $6,700. Okay. Now that plan, that year, that year three, mm -hmm. you spent more than you would have on a supplement. Okay. Right? But the year after, what's happening? You're not having the same heart attack, you're not having um, all the same things that happened that year, right? You're okay. not having all the physical therapy, but you probably do have some accelerated stuff that's going on. Sure. So instead of your eight visits to the doctor, you might have 16, right? To get you back to normal. And that's what the goal of the doctor is, is to get you back to a manageable place. So instead of $400 for year four, I'm going to use 800. And then by year five, we're back at $400. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So now from year five to 10, we've already had our, ca our catastrophe. We're going to have five normal years. So each of those years, year six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, will all be 400. Five times 400 is 2,000. And I'm gonna need some help with the other one. Let's see, <laughs> let's see. Eight, 87. 12, 16, uh, 76, 83, 8,300. And if my math is wrong, please correct me. But from what I see, even if you had a catastrophic year, it's better than fifteen thousand. And the second year was was accelerated. You had to have more doctor visits. You might have had a couple of visits of physical therapy. You still ended up at ten. Where am I at? Ten thousand three hundred. Okay. Versus thirty thousand dollars. Okay. Wow. That's, still That's a, a big, big difference. difference right? Huge difference. Now, a PPO, we would run the same thing. We're going to do 800 for years one and two. We're going to do 6,700. We're going to do eight, I'm sorry, 1,600 for year four. And year five, we're back to 800. And we'll do 800 times five for years five to 10. Let's see, eight times five is 4,000. Mm -hmm. Do a calculator for me. And I do it like this with the with the client. I'll have them open up a phone and, or we'll do it on my laptop. Let's see, eight times three is 2,400. So 2,400 plus 1,600 plus my 6,700. Plus my four thousand, so I've got fourteen seven hundred. Seven hundred. That's still half mm -hmm. of what a Medicare supplement is. Wow. 
So here's the big difference that I see with, with the Medicare plans is how they function, right? right? So let me go back to that page one for just a second. When you go with a Medicare supplement, anybody who takes Medicare is going to take a Medicare supplement. When you look at Medicare Advantage, you have to decide if you want an HMO and you want to stay in network and stay within the doctors that are contracted with that plan, or you can even look at a PPO that allows you the freedom to go outside of network, but you're going to pay a little bit higher cost. But we can see from these costs that for your personal situation, and these numbers are escalated because it's not even what you're actually using. Sure. Right? But it looks like for you, you would save a lot of money long term with Medicare Advantage. Would you agree with that? So if I understand this correctly, what you're saying is with option number one in an HMO, my max in the next 10 years would be somewhere around 10300 I can't read your chicken scratch, but <laughs> somewhere around there. Or if I want to be in a bigger network, like a PPO network, I'm at 14700 in 10 years. Right. Or if I go with this supplement plan that I have to prepay, I could be at, out 30000 30, Well, you would definitely. I will be 100% 30000 100%, right. And here's the thing with Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplements. Medicare supplements, that monthly premium you're going to pay no matter what. Yeah. That's why it's prepaid. Medicare Advantage, you're paying only for the services that you have. So think about this, Gabe. If you never have that catastrophic year, think about how much those costs drop. Wow. Honestly, Carl, I mean, I, I'm very, I eat healthy. I work out a lot. I think these next 10 years... I won't even have this 10,000 at all. It'll just be nothing. So it could be. Yeah. It very well could be. But we plan for it if not, you know. Absolutely. So, now, excellent. What I will say is this Medicare supplements are tricky. They're guaranteed for the first six months that you're eligible for them. So once you turn 65, you could have everything in the world wrong with you and they still have to take you. Okay. After that, you're going to be medically rated. Okay. So if you have that catastrophic year and you try to go back and cheat the system and say, ah, I only want to pay 3000 instead of that 6700 we might have a hard time putting you on a Medicare supplement. Gotcha. Okay. But we can see long term when the doctors get you back to normal, the money's going to even back out and come back in your favor. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So we're, as long as we're on the same page with that, I just wanted you to see how the money kind of flows with that. Understand. So right now, how are you feeling? Which way are you kind of leaning toward as far as what type of plan you might like? I, I mean, I think the Medicare Advantage uh, HMO will work just fine for me. You know, okay. maybe next year, Carl, during open enrollment, October 15th to the end of January. Or what is it? December 7th or something. December 7th. Maybe right. we can sit back down and look at the plans again. Absolutely. And you know what? Here's the cool thing. Since I do everything on this page, whether it's Medicare supplement mm -hmm. or a standalone drug plan or Medicare Advantage, HMO, PPO, whatever, I can always be your agent. Matter of fact, I'll be your agent until you tell me you don't want me to be. Wow. That's awesome. And that's my commitment to you. All right, Carl. That sounds great. So I'm just so grateful you're here today, <laughs> man. I mean, it's I don't understand it. Now you made it so easy. Thank you. I'm going to teach you one more thing. And this is the hardest part of Medicare to understand. Okay. And this is probably why Medicare has 130 pages to try to explain how it works. Because it is kind of complicated in some things. But drug coverage can be really complicated. Okay. Now, if you noticed when I talked about on page one, I talked about your services, your A's and your B's. Yes. Your overnight. The alphabet suit. Right. But I didn't talk about any drugs, right? No. And that's because when you have a drug plan, whether it's standalone or it's built into Medicare Advantage, they're going to look very, very similar. You're going to have a deductible for anything that's a tier three, a tier four, 
we're at tier five. Okay. And what that means are the brand name drugs are going to cost you more, right? They're going to cost you on the front side with the deductible, and then your co-pays for those are going to be higher. But your tier one and tier two are going to be generics. Okay. And those are going to be less expensive because that's what Medicare wants you to get. Sure. Okay. So here's how Medicare works with its drug coverage. And this is true no matter if you have a standalone drug plan or if it's built into a Medicare Advantage. Okay. It works exactly the same. This is Medicare's rule. Okay. So you're going to start out each year or... If you're turning 65 in three months, in three months from now, whenever you start your plan, you're going to start out the same way with zero, right? Sure. And you're going to start building. Every time you go to the pharmacy, you're going to start building and putting into a piggy bank. Okay. Right? Now, every time you have a copay, that piggy bank is going to receive that copay. If that makes sense, right? So let's say you have to go get a, a prescription that's $50. Okay. Okay. $50 is going to go into that piggy bank. If you have a deductible for a tier four drug and you've got to pay $300, that $300 is going to go in that piggy bank. Okay. Okay. And let's say within the first five or six months, you spent 600 of your own dollars that has been put in that piggy bank, but the rest has been covered by the insurance company. Okay. Okay. And this is where it gets really tricky. So I hope, hopefully if I, if you, if you miss it, please let me know when the total cost of your medicine, not what you pay, but the total cost of the medicine, when it reaches 4660, the insurance company is not allowed to pay for your medicine anymore. Wow. That's why they call it the donut hole. I heard that term donut hole. Okay. Very important. Listen coverage this. Gap. So at 4660, whatever you have paid in is where you start your next level. Okay. Now, in the gap, in the donut hole, you and the insurance company are going to partner together and pay percentages of the cost of the medicine. Most of the time, it's going to be something like a 75-25. They're going to pay 75%. You're going to pay 25%. That's just in general, but that's pretty accurate. Okay. Okay. So where you were having a, a drug that was $25 copay, that drug might now cost you $150 while you're in the gap. Got it. Okay. Now, when does that reset, Call? So what happens is you have another piggy bank, <laughs> okay? That same piggy bank that you started putting money into with your co-pays that turned into $600 when you got into the gap sure. is going to continue to grow, okay? So every time you get another prescription, the money you put in there, your copay, that $150 or whatever it is, and what the manufacturer of the drug, because they're the one that's paying the other percentage, what they put in there is all going to go into that piggy bank now. Awesome. Once the piggy bank reaches 7,400, now you go into the last stage. Most people don't get there, okay? okay. But if, you're, if you have a lot of brand name drugs or a, a large amount of prescriptions, you may find that that happens. And when that happens, then Medicare says, you know what? We understand that we have probably made you broke. So we're going to give you some relief. Okay. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get you back to your regular copay schedule. And then we're also going to kick in so that you have a maximum amount for these prescriptions now. So now your generics won't cost anything more than $4. Wow. Where before they were probably 10 or 15. Awesome. Okay. Your brand name drugs are not going to be any more than $10.35. And these are drugs that are usually $100 a pickup. Okay. And if you have a specialty tier, which is usually 25%, you're only going to pay five. Awesome. So it's a lot of relief for the remainder of the year. But guess what? January 1st. Starts, starts all over all again. Over.
okay? This is the hardest thing to understand in Medicare. Did I make it so that you could understand that okay? That was clear as day to me. Perfect. Good job, Carl. Okay, so let's take a little pause on the, on the situation for a second. What I just did is I educated my clients and I gave him some key terms, okay? Maximum out of pocket. They need to understand that their, their plan, if they go into Medicare Advantage, still has a stop gap, right? It's a safety net. Nobody knows when that catastrophe is gonna happen, but if it does, Medicare Advantage still has that built into the plan. And one of the things that I didn't even mention to Gabriel, because we were kind of goofing around about the hospitalization, is there are safety nets inside of safety nets inside of safety nets. For example, if you looked at the summary of benefit and you looked at hospitalization, right? There's some plans that are $200 for four days and then that's it. Well, that's $800 for hospitalization. If you don't have another hospitalization, or if you're in the hospital for longer than four days, six months, you're still only paying for four days of the six months. Awesome. Okay, so there's stop gaps inside of the stop gaps. Okay, so this is my presentation that I start with, with every single client that I sit face to face with. And why do I do that? Because I want Gabriel and I to be on the same page. What Medicare costs, what the gaps are, what his personal costs look like, and let him tell me, well, shoot, I like to save $3,000 a year because I don't want to pay that because I'm not going to the doctor, right? The same would be true if, if, if he had a lot going on, but we'll get into that into another scenario. So now at this point, and I won't go into it because we've got a lot of platform training that's yeah. already on the website, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building my client profile inside of Spark, right? Let's go ahead and build this. Let's start seeing some specifics. Let's start putting your doctor's name and see what HMOs he takes, sure. what PPOs, et cetera, et cetera. And I go through the sales process through Spark. What's going to happen? You're going to build that client profile. You're going to go to a point where you can see the different plans based on annual cost for that specific client. And as long as his doctor, and it'll tell you if he takes it or not, as long as his doctor takes it, it's a winner, right? The platform makes it very, very easy. This is the hard part, building the rapport, educating them to understand the difference between how an HMO, a PPO, or a Medicare supplement works. Okay, so I'm gonna add something real quick to that. So guys, all of you, pretty much everybody in here is brand new to Medicare. So you don't have any bad habits, okay? Like any industry, people have bad habits. So you know what I mean, Trey. Trey's shaking his head. <laughs> We're teaching you the right way of doing this. We're being thorough. We're doing the right thing for the client, okay? And I want you guys all to keep that in mind as you grow your business and that's how you get a 1% or less in losses on your book of business, okay? This took a little bit, but when you get this down packed, I know it sounds like a lot right now, trust me. The first time I heard it, I almost shot myself. But it gets way easier because these scenarios are the same thing over and over and over. You will be very proficient at it. So don't get scared. You just want to make sure you do the right thing for the client. So we want to teach you the right way. Okay. Thank you. Now, the other thing I'll say is if you don't have one of these books, get you one of these books. These books are awesome. Now you can go to the LBA website. You can print out pages one, two, three, and four. We'll show you how to get that. By the way, we have it on our website, everything we're covering guys. We have it on the LBA Powered Agency portal. When you signed up, you got your login and password. You got to utilize the tools that we're giving you. Okay, we're going to go over all this today. 
Even if we have to go over time, I don't care. I want to make sure that you guys have everything you need to be successful. I'll stay here as long as it takes. Um, but I will tell you this, from my experience, when I sit down with somebody, if I write it out and I hand it to them handwritten, that's personal, right? They're going to remember that. The other thing it does when you give them a copy of pages, let's just say one, two, and three. I don't always give them four. Some of them are like, I don't care about the drugs. I'm like, okay, well, we'll skip that part. We'll do a really quick version of it, <laughs> right? But one, two, and three, when I dig down and I show them why we got to a specific type of product, they're not calling me 24 hours with buyer's remorse, right? They understand that's how I got there, and we got there together. That makes sense, everybody? And they actually picked the plan. I mean, he just went over all the options, and it's like, which one looks best to you, right? Now, do you see why a lot of times people get confused, and they think that a Medicare sub plan it ends up being the best thing? And when you break it down for them and actually get down to the micro, right, the numbers, that's why nine out of ten times you're going to do Medicare advantage plans because it's much less now there's exceptions to that and we're going to go over another scenario here all right so that was scenario one obviously that was the healthy client right that's what it was now we're going to go into scenario number two which is really awesome this is one of the unique things about medicare is not a lot of sales opportunities out there for clients with no assets right it's hard to make money Right, even on the insurance side, you might be able to sell them a term, but that's chargeback city, right? And unfortunately, they're just, people like that are just the mentality, right? They'd rather just spend the money on going to the mall instead of paying their term policy or whatever the case may be, or they just honestly can't afford it, right? Well, this is one of the small or few businesses out there that a person that has no assets, okay, right, or very little assets or income, you can still make the same amount of money, okay? Yeah, it's bananas. So this second scenario is your low income client, okay? Your low income client. All right, we don't have to go through pages all that again, right? No, 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 we're gonna, we're gonna cut to the chase. So on a low income client, a lot of times, and let's be honest, right? On a low income client, <coughs> if you look around the neighborhood, and it's, it's a low income neighborhood, you can start right off with asking questions, right? So I walk into the house, hey Gabe, how you doing, I'm Carl. I'm doing all right, Carl, how you doing? <laughs> doing great, I can tell you're from the country. I sure am. Awesome. Hey, let me ask I you married my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you a question. Um, if you don't mind, there's some benefits that some people with lower income can qualify for. Do you mind if I ask you what your monthly income is? Sure, it's $800. Okay. There's a schedule out there and you, and you might have to look it up for Medicaid eligibility. Okay, I've done a training on it. You can go back into the YouTube channels, the different uh, QI1, QMB, SLMB, he tells me $800. I know he's full Medicaid, or at least he's eligible for it, okay? If you look on the screen up here, these are the different cards. So the other way that I can ask him what his monthly income is without being so direct is, hey, Gabriel, do you mind if you show me the cards that you have when you go to the doctor? And if I see one of these cards, He's Medicaid. That automatically tells me he's Medi Medi. Guess what I'm not gonna do? I'm not gonna go through all the different costs you don't need to. for a regular person. I'm gonna say, Gabe, guess what? I've got some great news for you. <laughs> You're gonna qualify for some plans that have not only no cost per month, but no cost for most anything and they're gonna have some special things like dental and vision, transportation. Some of them have groceries. 
So I'm going to jump right into the DSNP part of it. Okay. Now, let me find where I put my stuff here. No. No. Yeah, so your DSNP, you're going to get familiarized with that. DSNP. That's that's going to be the this client tell here that we're getting ready to go. D SNP. Yeah. D S N P, right? Paul? D S N P. It stands for dual special needs plan. Yep. And this is not what I'm going to put my D SNP at the bottom. Yep. I'll put my. Okay, so I'm going to show you a different way to do it. So if a lot of special needs plans, especially when we look at chronic, are not going to be in the Spark platform. Now, this is very important. The duels will be there. The chronics will not, right? So what I did is I took some screenshots from Medicare.gov. <coughs> which you can do, right? You can go to medicare.gov, hit find plans, and you can go ahead and pop their zip code in there, and you'll see this little section that says special needs, right? But one of the questions it's gonna ask you is, do you get extra help? Do you qualify or do you have Medicaid, et cetera, et cetera? If you click that button, it's gonna show you plans just like this one. And if you look at where I circled, you see that SNPDE? That stands for dual eligible, special needs plans, dual eligible. Now I want you just to take a look at this for a second. Monthly premium, zero. Uh, total drug premium and cost, zero. Other cost, zero, zero. Specialist copay on the right hand side there be your left-hand side. Zero copay, primary, zero. All the benefits they get, vision, dental, hearing, transportation, fitness, worldwide emergency care, telehealth. And if I jumped into that plan, it would show you a whole bunch of other stuff. And guess what? All the services cost them nothing. Not a dime. So, normally, in a training where people are savvy to Medicare and they've sold Medicare for a while, somebody will say, why wouldn't I just keep my peach care? Because I only pay $2 to go to the doctor. But why would you pay $2 to go to the doctor? And why would you give up all these other benefits that are given to you? Because you get to keep that and you can add this to it. And this is going to let you go to more doctors, better quality doctors, right? So, Carl, let me ask you this, sir. Okay. Are you telling me that this is going to be free 99? <laughs> free, I don't understand. Free 99. Free 99? Yeah, zero. Uh, how about free? Yeah, let's do that. Free 99. <laughs> Who gets the 99, though? <laughs> Never mind, Carl. It's a country thing. Wow. I love living in the U.S. I don't do a damn thing. I don't work. I don't do nothing. And I get all these benefits for free. I feel bad for the first guy that actually went to college and worked and did all that crap. <laughs> True. Okay, so, side note, you can go into the portal and look at the dual eligible, but... Two ways to find out if they're dual eligible. If they're dual eligible, don't even waste your time going through pages one, two, and three. There's no need to. They don't need to know the cost. They're not going to pay them, right? So why go through it? They don't need to know what a maximum out of pocket is because it does not apply to them. Just go right into they're eligible for special benefits. Now let's talk about who's your primary doctor, who are your specialists, 
and what drugs do you take? Let's pop this into the, um, the portal and let's find a plan that matches what you need. And you would go, when, when he means the portal, you're talking about the carrier portal in this scenario, correct? No, no, you could actually do the, the, the dual doors, eligible, the you can do it through. So you can do those in Medicare Sunfire, uh, which is the platform, right, that you can use for qu the quoting tool that you're going to have. So guess who my favorite clients are? <laughs> dual <laughs> dual <Me>. eligible. <laughs> you know why? Because it just took me, what, three minutes to get him to a place where he's already excited that he's going to get more benefits. And I'm already in the portal, typing his stuff in, and I'm probably in and out of his house after we get done joking, because they're all going to have that personality, right? I'm going to be in and out of his place in 20 minutes. That's how you make $611 in 15 to 20 minutes. You don't have to get into that whole spiel. So a lot of clients, me being a financial professional, okay, that wasn't my clientele, right? I was dealing more with your 65 professionals. It's just a little more work. You know, I just did one a couple weeks back. Good client of mine. He turned 65. It still took me 20 minutes with Sunfire. It was very quick. I mean, I have rapport built and stuff. You know, he's a client of mine. So he literally gave me his information. Doctor, he didn't care. He was super healthy. Um, really, he, he where he was at, because he was working for... Uh, a printing company for many years and um i think he was paying out of pocket almost 500 dollars or something a month so he was just relieved he was like oh my god gabe this is amazing so we got him on a medicare advantage plan and actually you you helped me with that one remember and um it took 20 minutes literally 20 minutes yeah. not long at all now i believe the young well, lady is recording no, me no no questions right now we got to no, no, get no. this i want to okay. just address something so you had asked me if it was too much to pay the 164 or whatever. These are the people that are probably going to be eligible for the dual eligible. Right. Okay. Now there are different levels. And one thing that you do need to keep in mind is the different levels. So I encourage you to look those up or go back into my video and understand QI1, which only pays the part B uh, deductible versus a SLMB versus a QMB and all the other stuff that I talk about in that video because you have to look at the plans and, and look at the fine print. Some plans are only for full Medicaid. The cards that I had showed you up there, if they have one of those, they're full Medicaid. Don't worry about it. Okay. But if they get extra help, if they have lower drug cost or they don't pay their Part B premium and they don't have that card inside of the portal, a spark, you can check to see what their level is. Okay. So you can see if there are QI1, SLMB, QMB plus, what have you. And then you can look inside the plans and see how the plans tolerate that. Some plans that are built to be full Medicaid will allow a partial to join it because they have such rich dental and vision and transportation and meals on wheels and everything else. I've even seen them where they get free hairdressing, right? They can go to the hairdresser twice a month, right? A ton of benefits, but if they only have partial, they might have to pay a premium per month for it, okay? So that's the only thing I will tell you to watch out for with these uh, dual eligible special needs. All right. Excellent. So that one's very, very easy, right? And again, when we tell you that everyone's a client that turned 65, we meant it. It wasn't just because they're 65. If you're low income, middle of the road, or high net worth, you have to go on a plan, guys. Everybody's a client. Okay? What? Okay. One quick one because we'll be here all night. Yep. So, is there ever a situation where somebody is already on Medicaid and you can get them to turn Medicaid? So, somebody says, Oh, I'm already on Medicaid. It's like, All right, great. We need them. Is our next step? That next part? Okay. If they're already on Medicaid, we don't want to change their Medicaid. Right. We want to put them on a Medicare plan that combines their benefits. Right. So, think of, it, think of it like this I've got tea and he's got water. And this is too sweet for me. If 
I put some of that water in this tea, it's going to make it perfect for me, right? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take Medicare benefits, align them with Medicaid benefits, and give them the most out of their plan. So those cards that you saw up there, those all fall within the Medicaid program already. We're just adding the Medicare side. He gave the scenario. He's like, well, why would I go on this when I pay $2? Well, zero is better than $2. Plus, on the left-hand side there, this thing died. On the left-hand side there, it covered all that other stuff. The dental, he's, he's seen plans that cover hairdressing, all that other stuff. Okay, so if they if they're haha, <laughs> yours are still working. Good question. Is it? Yeah. All right. So if yep. no, mine's dead. If somebody if somebody is on Medicaid, the state, whatever state it is, Georgia, Florida, Texas, wherever, is already paying for their Part B premium. There's a there's a video I've already done on lower income. Highly encourage you to watch that because it talks about the Par B premium. It talks to, about the extra help they get with drug coverage. Um, it covers a lot of what you're asking about, and there's a lot that goes into that. We just don't have time for all of that in this session. But we're not looking to apply for that. Awesome. Awesome. That is awesome. I run into so many people that have that, and guess what? They love me when I leave because I give them additional benefits. You want to take a look at it? Boom. Right. And and guess what? They get to keep the plan they have with their Medicaid. They're just getting another plan on top of it. Good stuff. All right, so now we're going to talk about uh, people who have special needs but on the chronic side. Now, on the chronic side, this is probably, for those of you that are new, this is going to be the most tricky part of the business because you can't, all right, you can't just use the Spark platform to find these. Okay, so I want you always to keep in mind there's more than one way to skin a rabbit, <laughs> right? My favorite thing to do, and I, where's the trainer at? Is he still in here? Close your ears for a minute. I don't want you to hear this. I love going to Medicare.gov to find the plan that I'm going to find. Even though it's easier to go into the Spark platform and, you know, put all their information in and it's going to translate over. If I'm trying to find something really quick, I'm going to Medicare.gov. I'm going to pop their zip code in there, and I'm going to find what I need, right? Especially if it's a special needs plan. So if I talk to Gabriel, and Gabriel says, hey, I've got a chronic illness. I've got type 2 di diabetes. You see up there where it says special needs plan? And then it says plans for people who have a chronic or disabling condition, like a stroke, cancer, dementia, diabetes. I can click that. And then guess what? These plans are going to pop up. Here's an example of one. This is a di This is a plan for. Uh, oh no, this is not. Here we go. This is an example of a chronic plan. Monthly premium, zero. Look at the maximum amount of pocket, 3400 You remember when I did my my uh, example? 6700 That's very low. But look at some of the other things. Primary care, zero. Specialist, zero. I want to keep this person healthy. I know they have a condition. They're actually going to get their own case manager from the plan that you put them on, and they're going to get some benefits above and beyond the normal plans in that area. Think about any HMO or PPO that's for a normal person. They are going to have to pay to see their specialist. This plan doesn't. That's awesome. 
especially for somebody who's <coughs> diabetic. Think about that. That could be, especially if they're lower income, but they're not quite Medicaid, that could be the difference of them having an issue, let's say with their foot or their leg, and choosing not to go to the doctor or go to the doctor, and that could turn into an amputation. Does that make sense? That's how serious this stuff can get. And that's why I say you have to have the heart for people to really dive into this stuff. But you can find these plans very easily by going to medicare.gov, going and checking that little box that says special needs plans. And then as you scroll down, just make sure you look for what I highlighted there, C-SNP, right? And it'll tell you what the, what the uh, chronic plans are for. So you take advantage of extra services program designed to help you better manage your cardio cardiovascular disorder, chronic heart failure, or diabetes. This is not a plan for a stroke, right? Some are only for diabetes. Some are only for cardiovascular. So you've got to go through and you've got to look. But if they qualify for them, the benefits on these types of plans are awesome. Make sense? I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the next one. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Very, very passionate about veterans. Um, my dad was a veteran, 82nd Airborne. I've helped personally over 15,000 veterans get benefits through my practice in Orlando. Um, we can talk more about that another time. But the next scenario is a veteran that's either getting benefits directly from the VA or they're on TRICARE for life. You know what I'm talking about back there. Okay, sir? And you don't... You don't have to answer if you don't want to, but do you have TRICARE for life? You do? You just went on it. Okay. You've been on it. Okay. This was recent? How long ago? Who switched you to that? We can talk later. Let me, I'm just going to give you the... Go ahead. What plan did they put you on? Humana. Humana. Was it a Patriot plan? Was it a plan specific for veterans? Yes. Okay. Okay. Then you're good. That scared me a little bit. Because the general consensus, if you run into a veteran, for those of you that don't know, TRICARE is for the veterans that made a career out of it, and they retired from the military. That was their job. Okay? So they get benefits that normally the other veterans that were in maybe two, three years, they're not going to get TRICARE for life, okay? TRICARE for life, it's its own animal, so to speak, its own type of insurance that's for life. That's why it's called TRICARE for life. And, you know, my dad's on it. It covers pretty much 100% of everything. And you can get in huge trouble with CMS, and that's a good way to get yourself in big trouble by getting a sale and switching somebody because once a veteran is off TRICARE, they cannot get back on it, okay? That is a huge no-no. I'm telling you right now, you do not take a veteran off TRICARE for life. If we find out that you do that, we're disassociating ourselves with you, okay? That is a great way to lose your license or get heavy penalties and fines and you just do not take the veteran TRICARE. If you, if you hear the word TRICARE, there's there's exceptions, right, with this yeah. plan that I'm going to let. As soon as you're done scaring them, I'm going to yeah. tell them the right way to go. I, I, the reason I'm doing that, it's that serious, okay? But there is an exception. What you can do is if you run into that scenario until you get comfortable with it, call, call, okay, or reach out to Spark. Reach out to our team to make sure you know how to handle that scenario, okay? So, Carl, go ahead and talk a little bit about that. Okay. So before I could do that, let me let me <coughs> explain why this is an issue. And this is true really for any over 65 products. Everything has to do with the drug coverage, right? Let me be honest. The way we have to explain the drug coverage is a pain in the ass, right? 
Excuse my French. But it is, right? When you put somebody, even from just a Medicare Advantage plan to standalone PDP, it drops their other plan. Anytime you change drug coverage, it changes their plan. So this is what the problem used to be with Medicare Advantage. All Medicare Advantage used to have drug coverage built into it. So if you took a veteran who had TRICARE that has prescription drug coverage built into it and moved them to Medicare Advantage that has prescription drug coverage, you can't have two at the same time, the Medicare Advantage takes them off TRICARE. Yeah. Okay? A lot of plans have gotten smart and they have figured out why are we losing this whole population just because we've got plans with drug coverage in it. Let's take the drug coverage out. Let's label it something like Patriot or Honor or Eagle. There, there's a bunch of different names for it, depending on what company and what it is. But notice what I highlighted right there on top. This medical plan is for people who have separate prescription drug coverage. That could be TRICARE, CHAMP VA, just the VA, any of those plans. The difference is when you put them on a plan like this, this is a United Healthcare product right here. If you put them on this plan, if they were a VA person, they don't show that card when they go to the VA. Right? And they definitely don't show that card when they go to the pharmacy because they're getting their drugs from the VA. If you put somebody with TRICARE on this plan, if they're going to pick up their drug cover, they're, if they're going to the pharmacy, they're using their TRICARE card. They don't need to show the AARP because it has nothing to do with their drugs. Correct. But what this plan does is a lot of things. This specific plan, it gives them $50 back from the money that they pay into their Part B. That's a, that's a great incentive, right? That's 600 bucks a year back in their pocket just for joining the plan. So even if they didn't even use any of the other benefits, they gain $600. It also allows them to go to a lot of doctors. Now, TRICARE is pretty much accepted most places, but there are exceptions, right? This is a PPO. It's a regional PPO. So again, it's going to give a lot of coverage. It's going to give them an OTC benefit. That's over the counter. I want you to imagine if I gave you a credit card or a gift card. Oh, matter of fact, you know what's funny? I happen to have one in my pocket. If I gave you a little gift card like this for 50 bucks, 40 bucks, and you can go into Walgreens and pick up Band-Aids and toothpaste and soap, that's what they get every month, or I'm sorry, every quarter, $40 worth. All they, do, all they got to do is pick it out. They get a $100 allowance for their eyewear. They get $170 um, hearing, aids. hearing aids. You know how expensive hearing aids are? It's only 175 bucks. Crazy. So there are plans built specifically for veterans, but if you're going to put anybody who has TRICARE, CHAMP VA, or if they go to the VA on a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to do one that does not have drug coverage. Okay? Give me a thumbs up that everybody understood that. Very important, awesome. guys. So I didn't mean to scare you, but there was a lot of issues back in the day with this. A lot of agents got in big trouble for it. Yeah. And again, we want to keep you guys safe. We're training you the correct way, right? You don't want to be doing the wrong thing. That's our job to make sure that we're training you correctly. But that's that's amazing. Um, actually, the, the Patriot plans, I didn't know they were so robust. So awesome. I'm actually going to talk to my own dad. <laughs> I learned a little bit about this today because I was always taught stay away from them. So I just ended the conversation. But I'm glad there's a solution now. 
and we're able to do that. So yeah. that's thanks, Paul. I, I didn't know that myself. They're, all, they're actually only a couple years old. They just yeah. figured this out a couple years ago. Yeah, so that's good back there for the veteran back there. Now you got even better benefits, which is awesome. All right, we've got one more scenario. We're going to open it up for questions, guys, okay? We just want to be respectful. I'm one minute over, and what we're going to do is we have one more scenario, and we want to keep to our time, which was 5 o'clock. I'm going to offer to everybody in here, if you guys want to stay, we're going to have Bob come back, and he's going to do a platform training on the Spark platform, which I highly recommend that you stay. If you can't, that we understand. We do have our YouTube videos, right? You can go on to On Demand anytime, but we're going to do a live. You can ask questions, all that good stuff. And then after he's done, I'm going to I'm gonna wrap everything up, and I'm going to walk you through the LBA platform. I'm going to walk you through on how to sign somebody up with your teams because we're getting a lot of emails and calls. I'm putting the information incorrectly. I don't know what's happening, this, that. So I'm going to walk you through every single step-by-step step for you guys to build a Medicare agency and understand how we communicate. LBA is a different type of Medicare agency, guys. We don't babysit you. You guys are adults and self-employed. Most Medicare agencies out there, they babysit people. All the tools and resources are available to you, and we're going to go over it and, and show you step-by-step step here today. Highly recommend you stay for this. I'm going to be here teaching. Even if we have five people here, I'll show them. So enjoy it. But let's go over this last one very quickly. We yeah, are actually at five. The last one is, is very simple. Um, if you think back to page two, right, and sometimes in the industry you have terms among agents that you wouldn't share with your clients, but let's say you have a train wreck of a, of a client, right? I mean, that's what we call them, right? Yeah. I'm going to the hospital every other day. I need Absolutely. physical therapy five times a day. Um, I'm spending way too much money um, on my plan, right? And they're and they're getting beat up on copays, but at the end of the day, they would spend more than that three thousand dollars. That's a meds up person, right? So, the only thing I was going to say about the last scenario is when you're doing the numbers, the numbers don't lie. And if the numbers are too close, if you're running an HMO and the number is 27, 2800, put that person on a med sub because health usually doesn't get better. It gets worse, right? Unless they just had a catastrophic year. And then you probably still should put them on the med sub for that year and then switch them the next year to Medicare Advantage. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's all I'm really going to say about the MedSup is when you're doing pages two and three, wherever the numbers take you is where that client should go. It's really just that simple. Awesome. Everybody give Carl a round of applause. He did an amazing job.